Stabilized footage has been all the rage in the past few years. Gimbals are the talk of the town. Every company's coming out with new versions every single year. And they just seem to keep getting better and better. But gimbals are honestly a pretty expensive accessory. The low end of the range starts at $550 with gimbals like the Moza Air 2, DJI Ronin S, and the Zion Weeble Lab. And it can get up to the five, even $10,000 range like the DJI Ronin 2 or the Freefly Movie Pro. But recently we've been seeing super affordable options come to the market, such as the recently released DJI Ronin SC, which cost $439. So when Feiyu Tech reached out to me if I'd like to review their AK2000 gimbal, I was genuinely surprised when I found out that it only cost $379. My name is David Zhao and today we're going to take a look at, in my opinion, the best budget gimbal of 2019. To clarify, gimbals exist even in the $100 range, but gimbals fall into what I like to call classes. You have your smartphone action camera gimbals, which range anywhere from $100 to $300. Your DSLR gimbals, which range from $400 to $1,000. And then you have your professional gimbals, which start at about $1,000 and the sky is really the limit based on the exact specs that you need. What really defined these gimbal classes is really based on the weight capacity of the gimbals themselves. You're talking about the motor strength of the gimbal. Your lower end gimbals are made for smartphones, action cameras. They typically have a carrying capacity of a pound, maybe two pounds. While your DSLR class gimbals have carrying capacity that range anywhere from four pounds to like 10 pounds. Then your professional gimbals will have an even greater carrying capacity than that. So that brings me to this gimbal, Feiyutex AK2000. Why do I think this is the best budget gimbal of 2019? And before we start, if you end up wanting to check out this gimbal, I have a link to it down below. Okay, let's start from the top, build quality. This gimbal's construction is absolutely rock solid. The entire motor head, including the motor arms, are made of metal. The body of the gimbal, or the shaft, is made out of a nice durable plastic, and the grip itself is a rubber material that feels both good to hold and gives you a good grip for while you're using it. There are multiple physical function buttons on the interface that lets you power on the gimbal, switch between modes on the gimbal, a back trigger for uh, realigning or recentering the motor head, and also you can use it to turn into selfie mode. A joystick that lets you control the axis and even a turn dial on the side, which lets you control an axis of your choice or control a connected follow focus, giving you more fine control over your gimbal. And you might have noticed this already, but they even have a nice LCD touchscreen on the shaft that displays the current power level, gimbal mode, and something I really enjoyed, the power of the directional command you're giving from the joystick. Couple this with the convenient markings on each balancing axis along with sturdy twist to lock knobs, you can color me impressed because I was not expecting this many features from a $379 gimbal. But how does this gimbal perform, you might be wondering. Once again, this gimbal surprised me. As usual, I took it to the park with a net and we put the gimbal to work. Without a doubt, it does what it's supposed to do. I tested shots from walking speed, jogging speed, and even at an all out sprint, and this is what I found. When it comes to stabilization, it delivered incredible results. Smooth, jitter free, stabilized footage that we've come to expect from gimbals of any caliber. It's an intuitive experience if you've used any vertical grip gimbal, so operation was pretty easy. I was also pleasantly surprised that even at a fast jog, the gimbal did a very good job stabilizing. And I wanted to show you the video in real time so you know that it's not warp stabilization or slow motion that's making it smooth, but rather the gimbal itself. It's not until I get into an all out sprint does the footage start looking shaky. This typically happens when my feet hit the ground hard as I'm trying to run, but as filmmakers, we obviously take advantage of every tool we have to tell the story. And if completely smooth footage is what you're after, even while sprinting, then a bit of warp stabilization fixes it right off. And if you want even more stable footage, you can of course shoot it at 120 frames per second like I did for this shot, and then slow it down, and then add a layer of warp stabilization on top of it, and now you have some insanely smooth footage. 
Now, I will note that I'm not a fan of the default smoothness setting on this gimbal. I find that when I was running with the gimbal, even the smallest, the slightest, you know, twist of my wrist of the handle, intentional or not, would cause the gimbal to just whip to point wherever I was looking at. Obviously, this makes some shots unusable in an actual video. However, this isn't to say that the gimbal can't perform smooth panning shots. To the contrary, orbiting shots I got with this gimbal were as good as any other gimbal I've ever tested. Later, I realized you can adjust the setting on the gimbal using the touchscreen by changing the setting to smooth. Now let's talk about other specs that are noteworthy with this gimbal. The weight or payload capacity of this gimbal is six pounds, which is incredibly capable. For reference, the Ronin M I first bought has a weight capacity of eight pounds, while the Zion Weeble Lab has a carrying capacity of 6.6 .6 pounds. With a six pound capacity, that's more than enough for me to mount my A7 III with the 24 millimeter GM, the 85 millimeter GM, and the 24 to 70 millimeter GM, which are basically all the lenses I would use on a gimbal setup anyways. And that LCD touchscreen you saw earlier is one of the more striking features on this gimbal. In the default menu, it lets you quickly see the wireless connectivity of the camera, the Bluetooth status, battery level, the current gimbal mode, photo or video mode, and the current axis that the turn knob is controlling. And if you swipe on the main menu, this gives you even more access to other settings on this gimbal. This lets you access things like the payload settings, adjust capture mode, you know, to get that nice smooth mode we discussed earlier, and more. Another sweet feature you'll find with this gimbal is that it allows for camera to gimbal connection, letting you start and stop recording from the control of the buttons on your gimbal. Out of all things, when it comes to camera connections, this is one of those things that I find is super, super nice. It's just a huge quality of life thing that I'm personally 110% for. Also, it's really good to see that the roll axis is angled so that it doesn't block the view of your camera's LCD screen. This one is huge for me. I know this is slowly becoming the norm, but if you owned a gimbal without this simple feature, you'll know how much of a pain it is to monitor your footage while filming on a gimbal. And I think it's neat that the gimbal head can be detached from the controller body for two reasons. It gives you the option to purchase and utilize a ring setup, which is my preferred setup for maximum stability and control, but also because you can just pack away the gimbal much more easily for any travel situations in your camera bag. Finally, similar to the Zion Weeble Lab, it uses four 18650 lithium ion batteries, which means replacement batteries are affordable and that these should have similar all day shooting capabilities. And some random things I noted while I was using this gimbal. I really dug the raised back platform on the gimbal base plate that Feiyu Tech provides because most of the time the lenses I use on my camera bodies are uh, thicker than you might imagine, like the 85 millimeter GM, and they protrude downwards. This lets the camera sit more or less level on the camera plate as compared to a flat base plate, which might cause my camera to basically sit angled upwards. And therefore on the default gimbal startup, my, my horizon level is kind of lower than it should be because the camera is angled higher than it should be. One thing I didn't like was the lever lock. So I didn't really like the lever lock for the base plate, how you put the base plate onto the gimbal. At first I thought that this was really neat because in order to put it on and lock it in, all you have to do is turn this lever around. The problem is when you're putting your camera on a gimbal, you want to make sure it's secure. So you kind of tighten that lever lock. And then the issue comes when you're taking it off, I had a fight with it and it was this really jarring and almost scary experience where you're trying to, you know, take the uh, undo the lever lock and you yank it and it just pops. Um, it's not my favorite way of locking in the base plate. So that was something that I noted. So here's my conclusion about this gimbal. For $379, you get a vertical grip gimbal that has a six pound payload capacity, a useful touchscreen, and a well-designed control interface an unobstructed camera view, along with gimbal to camera connectivity, topped with solid build quality. I don't know what you'd want me to say. I, I really did try to find things to nitpick, but by the time I sat down to write this review, they were all just really minor inconveniences that I noted. I wanted access locks like I have from the Zion Weeble Lab, but the experience I had with balancing my camera on this gimbal was fine, it wasn't annoying. I wished it was a little lighter, but it delivers a solid payload capacity and the gimbal is really well built. I wanted to be as critical as I could be, 
but it's literally the cheapest DSLR class gimbal I could find. And it still impresses me more than a lot of other gimbals I've used. I think maybe the only thing that would turn this into my favorite gimbal would be if it had the Weeble Labs underslung mode. And I don't even think that everyone wants or even likes that version of the underslung mode as much as I do. So if you're in the market for a budget camera gimbal, well, the Feiyu AK2000 may be your best choice. It has such an insanely packed feature set that I'm honestly surprised that I hadn't heard more praise or coverage of this gimbal, especially considering it's been nearly a year since it was announced at Photokina 2018. If you want to check out this gimbal, I have a link to it down below in the description. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the review. This one was really fun to make, both from filming the B-roll in my new apartment to the fact that I just felt like a kid discovering a really cool toy for the first time. If you want to see more content like this, it's as simple as clicking that like button, smashing that subscribe button, bing banging on that notification bell, and forfeiting your firstborn to YouTube. Just that easy. Now I'm curious about what you think of this gimbal. For less than $400, I want to hear your impressions on this bad boy. Do you like the sound of this gimbal more than the Weeble Lab? Alright guys, it's been real. As always, I will see you in the next video.